I'm Kristen with UT Southwestern. We're here at the Institute for Exercise and Environmental Medicine at Presbyterian Hospital. It, the Institute is a partnership between UT Southwestern and Texas Health. So with me today, we have Dr. Ashley Harding, who is a third year cardiology fellow, and Dr. Matt Kane, who's also a third year cardiology fellow from UT Southwestern. So I was hoping you guys could tell us a little bit about what do you do here at the Institute? Sure, at this Institute, we have a huge human physiology laboratory where we're basically testing. Um, we have lots of patients that have volunteered for various uh, testing. Some are sedentary, some are more athletic, and we're basically testing kind of their cardiovascular fitness, amongst other things, before and after some sort of exercise intervention. So we've got a swim flume over here, we've got a specially made treadmill for the lab, we've got biking that we can do, we can do extensive stress testing, we can do cardiopulmonary exercise testing, and things of various sorts on patients who are referred here as well for vari with various medical conditions. So we, since today we're talking specifically about a stress test, Matt, could you tell us, you know, what, why would somebody get a stress test? What do they measure? Maybe who would come as well? Sure, stress tests come in, in several different flavors, uh, and of those flavors they have different uh, means of doing them and different reasons why we do them. Right. Uh, at this laboratory we do a lot of stress testing for means of uh, seeing how physically fit somebody is. Okay. And that measure can be done, uh, you see behind us in a, in a large treadmill, uh, that has uh, specialized bags that uh, collect the gas that you expire and then looking at the chemicals of air inside them can tell how uh, physically fit someone is and how far they can go on the treadmill, how long they can go, etc. And that's something called a VO2 max. But other stress tests that we don't necessarily do all the time here can be done uh, to see how heart healthy somebody is from a heart blockage standpoint to see whether they have artery problems. Uh, in addition, uh, we sometimes do further invasive stress testing to see if somebody's healthy enough for a major organ transplant and things of that nature. Okay, awesome. So now this treadmill, it looks, it doesn't look like a treadmill I would see at the gym. Right. So how, how is this different? What are you going to do with this? So we're actually, um, we use a specific protocol here. So Michael Daniel is one of our second year cardiology fellows. Mm -hmm. He's going to be doing the a VO2 max test. So he's going to be, he has a specific training regimen that he adheres to every week. So he's got a certain, at a certain level of fitness at this point. He's basically doing this stress test for the purposes of determining what his fitness level is essentially today to help him tweak his exercise regimen in the future. Okay. So okay. we'll be able to see how fit he is based on the measurements that we're doing here today. Okay. So this treadmill, we use a specific protocol. It's different from some of the protocols um, other patients may experience if they're referred for various stress testing in the yeah. hospital. We're going to have him, we actually all already kind of calibrated the machine. He's going to run at a pace that he feels like he could run at for 20 or 30 minutes. And then every two minutes, we're going to raise the incline of this treadmill here, here by about 2%. So we want him to exercise for about 10 minutes before he's at his peak level of fatigue and feels like he couldn't go much further at the end of 10 minutes. Okay. That way we know we're gauging his level of um, activity so that we can assess his fitness level fairly well. Okay. So we'll go through all of the steps along the way to tell you how we're measuring, how well his heart is squeezing, and how fit he is okay. um, using various techniques in this laboratory. Okay, so let's go ask Mike a couple questions. So I'm not going to get on the treadmill, <laughs> but so it's a Dr. Mike Daniel, you're a third year fellow. So you, you exercise a lot. Tell us a little bit about your exercise routine typically. Sure. You know, normally we have to be at work around 7 a.m. So I usually get up around 5 a.m. and I, I go to a gym that I'm a member in. And I usually do about a 20 minutes of cardio training. I warm up on the treadmill, and then um, I I alternate depending on the day between a high interval, um, high interval, high intensity interval training, uh, just weight weight training, and okay. then some more cardio training. Okay. So how would you gauge your cardiovascular health? You feel you're pretty fit. Maybe you're lacking in some areas. Well, if I compare to my 18-year-old self, I'd say I'm not very fit right now. But um, I'd say uh, I'd say I'm fairly fit. Okay. Find out. Okay. Well, we're gonna get started. So All thank right. you for volunteering. All right. All right. So what do we do first? Okay. So what we're gonna do here is he's already learned. Um, we're gonna. So the mouthpiece that he's actually going to be putting in his mouth right now that's blue, he's got nose clips on, and essentially throughout this test, he's gonna be breathing an inert gas that's gonna help us measure how well his heart is pumping at various levels of the test. Um, he's also breathing in and out of this into these bags over here that are called Douglas bags. This is the gold standard for measuring his oxygen consumption. He'll have 
his, they'll have various bags turned on and off throughout the okay, Mike, throughout this go. stress test actually to measure his oxygen consumption. And at the end we can show you how we weigh the bag and we measure actually how much oxygen he consumed um, at peak exercise essentially to give us a measure of his fitness. So now when he's breathing in and out, sometimes it's going to the bag, sometimes he's getting inert gas that he's breathing in to measure his cardiac output along the way or how, how well his heart pumps. Okay. So it looks like he has a bunch of leads, maybe yes. attached to his chest. Yes. What do those measure? Sure. So maybe we can ask Cheryl. Okay. Here, monitoring. So we're always monitoring uh, his heart, his heart rate, and his heart rhythm throughout the entire procedure. So he's got multiple leads on his chest. For older patients who we might be worried about ischemia or um, heart blockages, we may be able to see diagnostic changes essentially on this on these EKG leads as he does more and more exercise. For his purposes, we want to make sure he doesn't have a dangerous heart rhythm as he's exercising, that he's not having any significant changes for which we might want to stop the stress test. So is that his heart rate going across? Yeah. Exactly. So this is his heart rhythm going across, and it gives you a heart rate. So his heart rate right now is 153, and he has a normal looking heart rhythm. So we see multiple different um, leads that are looking at multiple different electrical activities or different vectors different areas of the heart. Of the heart. Every spike that you see is a heartbeat. So the more spikes that you see on the screen are the more heartbeats that are going. But the different lines that go from top to bottom are different vectors of electricity that are being measured uh, that the heart polarizes with. So depending on which vector you're looking at, it can look a certain way. Uh, but each spike does represent a heartbeat. The more spikes, the faster the heart pumps. So yep. where are you trying to get him on this? Because he's at 158 now. Do you want his heart right. to be faster? Do you want to keep it about the same? Right. So we've got on the end what is what a 85 uh, percent of his natural predictive load. Okay. That's predictive That's a. That's a. But that's again an estimate because every person is different. Right. Okay. So for him, for the younger, his 85 percent of his maximum predicted heart rate in general, we want to make sure that people are giving us enough of a workload to be able to interpret what we're seeing on their EKG if we're looking specifically for EKG changes. For him, you know, he'll probably be about 100 percent of his predicted heart rate because he's younger. Right. Right. That's okay. That's okay. Um, so, so essentially, we want to get him. We see right now he's already at 85 percent. So as we start to incline the treadmill, that's going to go up a little bit higher as this workload gets, okay. gets harder. Okay. And yeah. is there a certain is there a certain incline that you wouldn't get higher than, or do you just keep going up gradually until they hit their peak? Until they can't go right. Okay. So for the purposes of this test, him listening to how he feels, if he feels like he can't go, you'll see the mask every couple minutes to give you a thumbs up. I can keep going to give you a. A middle of the way hand wave, like may not be able to make the next minute or two, or to give you a thumbs down. Like, I need to stop pretty soon. Okay. So we're going to let him because we're not seeing anything scary on his EKG. Um, his blood pressure is doing the appropriate thing, which would be to rise with exercise and not fall with exercise, right? Uh, which would be the normal response. We're going to let him go until he tells us he can't, so that we're getting as much out of him as we can. We're getting a really great stress test for that. Okay. Well, let's walk around and see what else we Perfect. see what else we have over here. So now we're when you hear the bag in ten, they're basically gonna turn on one of the Douglas bags, and he, his breaths are actually gonna go over here into the bag. We're gonna be able to measure at the end how much oxygen he's consumed, etc. So over here, maybe Dean can walk us through what we're seeing over here on this graph. Yeah, what you're seeing here are these two curves. The yellow curve is the oxygen uptake by each breath. Blue curve is the amount of carbon dioxide he's producing. And uh, on this table here, you see with each breath it calculates those values plus his ventilation, breathing rate. So you want them to kind of track together? Well, right? just close. 20 yes. seconds, we'll go to the next stage, Mike. Right now, the, the amount of CO2 he's producing is less than how much oxygen he's consuming. Okay. When, when these, when he gets close to his threshold, excuse me. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Now they've taken a sample of what he's, the oxygen he's consuming, the carbon dioxide he's producing, and we're going to turn off the bag. So we measured it over a specific period of time. And now we're going to go to the next stage. So he's been exercising now here for about four minutes. He's now going to incline a 4%. 
It's get, gradually getting she lost deeper. The lead. Yeah, she lost the lead. You probably didn't sweat a lot. I didn't think you could get from you. You gave us a fair warning. <laughs> so we're just hooking up his EKG lead. <laughs> Give us some good effort. We see that sweat. So like when they lose lead, if somebody loses a lead, do they have to start over or can they do you generally have enough on that you can keep? We generally have enough on. If this were a study, we would just stop and then re instrument. We can still get an accurate auction uptake though, but 10 seconds. Another Douglas bag on here again for yeah. 60 seconds. I think we got that lead back on, which is good. Still going. You're still good? Yeah, you're still good. All right. All right. Somebody come hit up thumbs up. Hey, Matt, can you come hit up three for me? What's that? Oh, yeah. Hit up three. Yeah. So let's, right. so can good. you tell us maybe what all of these lines are connected to? Yeah. I really got to yeah. focus on yeah. this. Yeah. Right, yeah. Over here. Let's see. 20. Yeah. 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 So it looks like, so it goes all the way to different places. Yeah, they're going to various things. There's some of the gas. All right, next day. Can you do one yeah. more? Yeah, settling Go. gas. And the nerve gas can help us measure his cardiac output. Some are connected. His breath's yeah. going to the Douglas back. We can see yeah. how much oxygen he's consuming. Yeah. Um, and various things. Uh, there are multiple multiple valves within this, so you can actually switch the direction of where he's breathing in and out of. But it's a closed circuit here. Okay. So we have to control where he's breathing from. I see that. in the back, yeah. they're getting see, exactly. They're getting fatter here. Is that right? Breath that he's inhaling. Here's, here's a Douglas bag that has That's not been it. used yet. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty. You have, really don't have any air in here, essentially. You can right. see. After he used to turn on a minute, Douglas back, we're going to be able to weigh that. We're going to be able to put the gas through right, a mass up. spectrometer to measure the concentrations essentially of each of them. Yeah, so what does that tell What does that tell you? Well, that basically, that's what's going to give us an accurate measurement of his oxygen consumption, essentially. So we're going to be able to give him at the end of this, um, after we've calculated all the various um, data that we've collected and measured uh, the consumption of oxygen, production of CO2, and things of that sort from the Douglas bags, we're going to be able to give him what um, a VO2 max, essentially. So that's going to be his maximum level of oxygen consumption based on the level of effort he gave us, which we're going to push him push him to the maximum level here. He's still going strong. And he's really trying it. He is. Based on his age and his sex, there are... Specific, there are specific values that say your your fitness is poor, it's average, it's good, or it's excellent. So for someone in, who's a man in their early 30s, really an excellent fitness is going to be a VO2 max of somewhere upwards of 49 and five. And that's going to be a very leader. Let's just finish this bag. 30 more seconds to do that re Okay, stay in Woo! Participants may not run like that. They're gonna, we're gonna pick a pace that's good for them, but they think they can. A lot of them walk, and they're walking. They're at a pace. Basically, they say, "I can keep this up for 20 or 30 minutes," and then we'll still, they'll still incline. They do the same protocol, just not running. Essentially, we're still measuring. We're taking, doing Douglas bags. We're measuring cardiac output non-invasively. We're looking at their EKG. We're taking their blood pressure. So one of the things that we do in this lab is we will measure somebody's VO2 and how much energy they can how much work they can do, uh, and then introduce an, event, an intervention like a three-month exercise training program or a okay. weight loss or something right. to that degree. And then we put them through the same test three months later or six months later or what have you as far as protocol goes and see what that does to how much they work they can do. Right. So this is kind of a, a baseline that one might do, and then you, inter you introduce an intervention, and then you see what the results are. Right. Okay. And for a lot of our study participants, we want to make sure that they don't have any 
ischemia, that we don't see any significant blockages in their heart before before they go through a significant exercise program or enroll in such a right. study. So, so what, overall, that's really helpful. So what <laughs> haven't we asked you? What questions do you get from patients when they come in here, study participants, that would help oh, maybe yeah. tell about the stress tests? I think that those are the big, you know, what is VO2 max? What does that mean? Which we, which I think we've covered. Why do we measure their heart rate throughout the procedure and their blood pressure? What's a normal response? What's not? And one thing we didn't do here today is an ultrasound of the heart before and after. So oftentimes the big questions come from, does my heart look normal? Is my heart squeeze normal before? And is my heart squeeze normal after? So I think that that covers a lot of the more common questions we get when patients come in for a stress test okay. of this so what, sort. What are we doing now? Looks like we're all, we're all done. We're done. He's actually he's going to recover now. So he got to, we did nine and a half minutes of exercise. Um, so we would have gotten to about 8% of an incline, which is excellent. Um, so we're going to let his, his heart rate his heart recover. We want his heart rate to come back down to where it was before he started. He's gonna drink some water. He looks pretty comfortable over here after doing that. We pushed him. He went almost exactly how long he wanted. We wanted him to. So we wanna we wanna get him to the point where he is really tired. So we know we've gotten a really great stress test out of him. So we're gonna get fairly good results, I think, from this. Awesome. Well. That's thank you very much You're for so having welcome. us here. This has been really a lot cool. of fun. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you for opening up the lab. Sure, of course. So we'll have to come back and do it they again. They do cool things in this lab. So this is one of, one of the things they do. Awesome. Well, thank you again. And thank Thanks you for all of us for tuning in. And stay tuned for our next Facebook Live.